Hi everyone, my name is Teddy Alert, and I'm going to show you today how to provision workloads from a VUALIZE automation environment to Amazon's public cloud AWS. So first of all, I'm going to log in to my VRA environment. And as you can see, I currently have only three catalog items that can be provisioned to my VSphere environment. The current version of VRA here is 7.6. First of all, I'm going to click on the infrastructure tab. Then I go to endpoint. Okay. I click on the endpoint menu. As you can see here, I currently have a vCenter endpoint that will be used to provision workload to my vCenter. Then I click on new to add a new endpoint. I go to the cloud menu and select Amazon EC2. So now I have to give it a name. I can also give it a description if I want to. And I will need to give it an access key ID and a circuit key. In order to do that, I will need to go to my EC2 management console and access the IAM service. But just before doing so, I just want to show you something from the EC2 console. As you can see on the main menu, I'm currently using the Amazon EC2 resources in Europe, Paris region, and I don't have any running instances. Now I can go to the IAM management console, click on users, and on the dashboard, you can see a quick overview of my IAM resources. Okay, let's go back to users, select, select an EC2 user, Go to the security credential tab. As you can see, there's no existing access key ID. So I'm going to click on create access key. Copy the access key ID. Go back to my VRA console and paste the access key ID. And I do the same for a secret key ID. And now my endpoint is created. So the next step will be to create a fabric group. So I just click on new fabric group, give it a name, give it a description. Then I will need to select a fabric administrator and finally select the proper resources that will be used to deploy the workload. That will be in this demo the free availability zone available in Paris. Well, okay, once my fabric group is created, I need to go to the administration menu, go to the machine prefix to create a new prefix that will be dedicated to my Amazon EC2 workloads. So I give it a name, select my tenant, enter a number of digits, and select the next number. Okay. And then just have to click on the green button to validate the creation of my prefix. After that, I go to the administration tab, go to the users in group menu, and go to business group to create a new business group. So I can give it a name, eventual description. All right. Then I can enter a uh, email address. Okay. 
then click next. So now we're into the members menu. We just have to select a group manager role. That can be a group from your Active Directory. You do the same thing for user role. And, uh, but for this demo, I won't be selecting a separate wall. Click next and in the infrastructure menu, select the machine prefix we created earlier and click finish to save your settings. You can see now appearing the business group we just created from the business groups menu. Now let's go back to the infrastructure menu and we'll be creating a new reservation. So click on new, select Amazon EC2, give a name to your reservation, select the tenant, then select the business group we just created and give it a priority. Then go to the resource tab and select a navigability zone from a Paris region. Give it a code, the machine quota. Select the keeper settings you want. Select the location where it will be deployed the EC2 instance. Then select the assign to a subnet in a VPC checkbox. And then select the desired VPC name. A pop up menu will appear, and then you can select the desired subnets and security groups. Click OK. You have now a summary of your settings and you can click OK to save the new reservation. You can see now on the top of your VRA console that your reservation has been successfully saved. Now that we've followed all the prerequisites, we can go to the design tab and start creating our blueprint. So we're going to click on new, enter a name for our blueprint. You can enter descriptions if you want, enter deployment limits, and choose the minimum and maximum these days. And then click OK. So now we're in the design canvas. On the left pane, select the Amazon EC2 machine component, drag and drop it in the main area. And now appears at the bottom a menu to set the component we just added. So you can select the machine prefix we created earlier, the number of instances the user will be able to deploy. Then go to the build information tab Select the blueprint type, which is here, server. I let the provisioning workflow as this. And then I click on the Amazon machine image menu. And I can select the AMI ID that refer to a particular image on the Amazon Marketplace. So let's get back to our uh, EC2 management console. I need to click on launch instance. And then I'll be able to choose an Amazon image and I'm going to pick an image from the eligible free tier. So once I copy the, the AMI ID I'm interested in, I can go back to my blueprint and from the filter I can enter the AMI ID and then select it and click OK. Select the keeper settings. And select the enable Amazon network option on machines trail box if I want to. Then I need to select the instant type. We 
which is for this demo Ruby, T2 micro instance. Okay, nothing to change in the machine resource menu, nor in the properties menu. So I can save my blueprint and click finish. And you can see my blueprint now appearing in the list of all my blueprints. And I just have now to publish it. So now let's get back to the administration tab. Go to the catalog management menu, then services. Click on new to create a new service. I give it a name. Can give it a description. And select the status as active. And click OK. Now you see the service just created. I can go now to the catalog item menu and select my new item. Select it and click configure. Click on browse and then I can choose an icon from an item. Okay. Select the service from the drop down menu. Enter a quota value and click OK. Now I can go to the untitlement menu, click on new, give it a name, enter a description, set the status as active, select by the business group and uncheck the all user in groups. To choose user and groups, we will be able to deploy from that blueprint. Then click next and select the untitled service. Click on the proper service. Same thing for the untitled item. All right. And finally, Select the action your user or groups will be able to perform on that catalog item. All right, once you're done, can you OK and finish? Et voilà. Now you can see our blueprint appearing from our catalog. So I'm going to click on request. Give a description for that request. Enter reason. And I can select whatever I want for the list days. I'm just going to do one deployment. And that's it. So we just now have to wait for the deployment to finish. If I want to, I can click on the in progress button to see more detail about that deployment and see exactly what's going on. So you can see that the deployment has been submit. Provisioning is in progress. In a couple of minutes, my EC2 instance will be deployed. So it's done. I can click on back. You can see that my instance is on. So I can go back to my EC2 management console, refresh it, click on the running instance button, and I can see my EC2 instance deployed and up and running. Okay, I can see all the different details, the instance name and type, the public IP address, 
and so on. Thanks a lot for watching and I see you guys in the next video.